Hi everyone and on today's video I'm going to cover a very important topic that's often neglected um, within the bushcraft community in my opinion and that is medicinal plants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop along the hedgerows and as we go and as I find um, some medicinal plants I'm going to show you them and tell you some of the uses of that plant and how it can be useful you know, to us within um, the bushcraft kind of perspective really. So stay tuned guys and I'll bring you back for more. So guys in front of you here you've got a elder plant with the berries on it starting to turn ripe here. Now this is a very very good and well known medicinal plant. It has very very um, many uses to it but a few of the really really good ones in my opinion are the berries that aren't ripe can be picked and used um, to essentially drop the kids off at the pool so they're a laxative have a really good laxative effect on them so that's the essentially the raw berries now also the flowers earlier in the year can be used to make a tea to help with sinusitis or can be eaten raw to help reduce a fever so that's just the elder tree there for you and a couple of the medicinal uses so guys here I have another medicinal plant and this one is a broadleaf plantain now there's a few different types of plantain you do get one with a like a narrow leaf and so on but this is the most common one now how common is the plant it's incredibly common you literally find it anywhere um, we did take this over to America with us and the Native Americans nicknamed it White Man's Footstep. So basically what that tells you is it's very common and it also tells you that it likes growing on ground that has been trodden on as such. Now a couple of uses of this, well first of all for me the most beneficial one is as a broad spectrum antihistamine. Now everyone goes on about the dock leaf being used to help you when you get a nettle sting. However that's psychosomatic as such, there's no, no proof behind that. There's no scientific reasons why a dock leaf would help. However, with the plantain um, we have the broad spectrum antihistamine in it. So all we have to do is take a leaf of this, crush it up between our hands and dot it onto the affected area and that will relieve the pain or the itchiness from the sting. Now this also has anti-inflammatory, antibiotic and antibacterial properties to it. Now this means it can be used for things such as um, cuts, grazes and burns. We can use beeswax um, and this and honey and so on to make a really really good ointment or we can also boil this to make a tea and then boil it down further until we have a tincture as such to use as an itch relief spray. So that's the plantain here for you guys. So guys here we have the stinging nettle as I'm sure many of you will recognise. Now, however much of a pain it is with the um, with this sting and such, it has many, many uses, um, medicinal and culinary uses. However, the amount of medicinal uses it actually has, there's far too many to um, mention in just this one video. Now, a few of the really important ones to me. It's very good for a urinary tract infection. Um, so you can boil it down, make a tea out of it and drink that, which helps with, you know, um, urinary tract infections. Now you can also use it to help with arthritis or joint pain as it helps with the 
I don't know the exact science but it helps with the proteins within your joints it's also very high in vitamin C to help boost your immune system and a really really cool one is if you boil it down um, to make a tea again and add it to oil you can use it as a shampoo and this shampoo will get rid of head lice it will also condition your hair and make your hair very shiny and help relieve dandruff so that's the common stinging nettle there for you so guys the plant I have here in front of me is wild chamomile now I used to know this as pineapple weed as if you take the flower bud here and crush it between your fingers smell it it smells like pineapples but anyway this has got a couple of medicinal uses you use it to make a tea so you use the flowers and the leaves and the stalks to make a tea and this has a calming effect so if you were stressed or anxious you could drink the tea and it's going to calm you down and you know help relieve you of that stress and those symptoms and also it's very good for stomach pains and stomach cramps so to relieve you of the stomach pains and stomach cramps and to help settle your stomach so that's just wild chamomile there for you so guys probably one of the first wild um, foods and wild medicinal plants that anyone actually learns is the pine tree or the pine needles now we use these to make a tea now that tea is actually four to five times higher per gram in vitamin C content than say an orange and then so orange juice now also this has antioxidant properties and it contributes to collagen production which is one of the main um, constituents of any you know any of your tendons any of your joints anything like that and it also has a decongestant property to it and obviously with the high vitamin C content it can help to boost your immune system as well so that's the pine needles there for you guys so guys the plant I have here is hedge woundwort now Mike from MCQ Bushcraft goes on about this quite a bit he uses it quite often um, to help him when game prepping as it does have some antibacterial properties um, so he uses it often as a hand wash now as the name suggests hedge wound wart it's very good for using um, under dressings for wounds to help them stop getting infected and to help them heal quicker and to help clot the blood as well if I'm not mistaken now it does have a very very pungent smell some people like it apparently it's a personal preference personally I hate it um, but that's hedge wound wart there for you so guys another plant we are looking at for medicinal purposes is sphagnum moss now although you can't strictly see it it grows like a, a carpet along the ground as such and if I pull up a lump here what I should be able to do is if I take it between my hands and squeeze it I should be able to get some water out like that now that is a very very good quality for us in a medicinal um, way as it means it can be used as an absorbent dressing for wounds now would you want to just put any type of random moss onto a wound possibly not but the great thing about sphagnum moss is it's got a high iodine content in it which means it will fight against any bacteria or anything that would make that wound go septic now that's the reason people say you can use it as a water purification device and in an emergency squeeze the water out of the moss 
and drink it straight away. So that is sphagnum moss there for you guys. So guys, what I've covered for you today are just a few of the medicinal plants that can be found within the woodlands and in the hedgerows. Now I really hope this video has kind of inspired you to look into it more as at the end of the day when we go to the woodlands and we're using our blades or we're out there for an extended period of time we should know how to look after ourselves properly and know how to maintain our bodies as such so they can function in the correct way and allow us to live and be happy out in the woods. So thank you for watching. Please remember to comment, like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.